Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and welcome back to another rapid fire critique where I take 10 of your best photos and give them a critique. Ema Critiquerson, if you'd like to submit a link with your best 10 photos, go to bit.ly slash fro critiques and maybe I'll be critiquing your best 10 images. This video is brought to you by Fro Pack One. 14 Lightroom presets that are custom made by Steven and I. To get a preview, go over to fronosphoto.com slash presets. I'll show you more of those later. So here we go. Starting off, we've got uh, Dennis Suringer. Uh, and we've got a Nikon N, uh, sorry, D90 with an 18 to 105 kit lens. I'm okay again, kit lens, nice range. The D90 is an old camera. It was actually, the, I believe, the one of the first, if not the first, DSLRs to offer you video with really bad jello effect when you wobbled back and forth like this. Oh, the jello was pretty bad. Uh, so this one is done at 90 millimeters. This is okay. Um, it's nice, it captures a person, a woman holding a child's hand, possibly mother, daughter. Um, it's okay. I like the colors, I like the tones, I like what's going on, the composition is nice. I don't know if it's cropped or not. Uh, sometimes women may not like how their butt looks. That's just, women get a little more critical. So I like the shot um, for the most part. I just feel that maybe a little wider, show more of the scene, show the people a little bit more at a distance um, for this one. But I do like what's going on for the most part. A splashy McSplasherson of water. This is done with the 18 to 105 at 105 millimeters, 1 1600th of a second at ISO 400. Um, some people would be like, well, couldn't you have dropped your shutter uh, to 1 800th at 200 ISO? And the answer would have been yes, but they got the shot anyway at 400 ISO, even with that old camera, I mean, 400's fine and it's outdoors. There's nothing wrong with that. Part of it is at 1 1600th of a second, they wanted to freeze the water. And they did a nice job freezing the water for the most part. I'm not too into this image. It's not the greatest shot in the world. I like the processing in terms of the contrast and the tones that are in there. I'd be interested to see how a black and white would look, um, but it's not the greatest shot in the world because you really can't see anything other than the water being spit out or thrown up in her face or whichever way it's going, or his face or her face, I'm not really sure because she doesn't look like she's wearing a shirt. So it could be a she or a he. I, it's somebody not wearing a shirt and the water's, I think it's a girl, but whatever. Keep moving. Um, all right, so we've got somebody who's looking up at a seagull waiting for it to poop on her face because that's probably what could happen if that, if that goes on right there. Um, it's okay, I, 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 this one I'd rather have the person looking out into the water because it's kind of awkward to see them looking up into the sky in this one. Maybe they're just feeling the sun. Now this is a image that I would personally run through black and white boomify to make it go boom. This one goes, hey look, before, boom. Or you could go with the more muted look before and after with Kensington with or without grain if you so had to so choose that. I would like to see the higher black and white boomify because it's too gray, it's too flat for my liking. Again, that's my personal liking, my personal taste on images is that I like more contrast. Doesn't mean it's right, doesn't mean it's wrong. A lot of people like the muted look, which is perfectly fine. That's why with the presets, we got a little bit of both. And so if you don't agree, you don't agree. If you agree, you agree. But again, it's personal preference when it comes to editing. I like this shot. I like the focus. I love the leading lines. We've got roads down here because where we're going, they don't need roads. You got this winding road right here in the background. I'd be curious to see what a completely focused one look like. How is this at F16? Holy Jesus, that's at F16. Wow. Couple things here. I would like to see what F22 looks like. Honestly, it's gonna be very similar to this with the focus right here if you're focusing on the flower. Um, I'd also like to see what does this lens do. We're at a 42 millimeters, 3.5. So that's probably gonna give you about an F5. I would be interested to see what F5 look like or backing up if you can to get the same composition and shooting at the at 5.6 could give you more a softer blown out background because it could be perceived as being a little distracting in the background because my eye may go to this big phallic looking tree with the balls right there basically, some Bob Ross things going on there. Um, and they're out of focus. I'd also be curious to see what focus would look like if you focused on the barn 
and had all this other stuff go out of focus right here. But I do like what's going on and it, and it makes me think. Uh, so nice job right there. Ooh, nice composition. See, this is using a natural frame. Natural framing is when you use something that's natural to draw interest to the image. Here we have a frame of brick or uh, stonework that the person's shooting through, which gives you dimension takes a two-dimensional image and makes it feel more three-dimensional. And that is very nicely done. You've got some nice sunlight bouncing in up over here, giving you nice highlights. You've got this town down below. Um, I don't know where this is. Don't know where it is, though. Uh, I spit on my screen. Ah, oh, this one, we're at F22. Holy jeebus. That one's at F22. Nice job on getting the line straight, uh, the horizon straight. All in all, I like the shot. Would it look good in black and white? I don't think black and white Boomify would work for this one because it would be too contrasty down here. But I do think if you went black and white, it could look interesting there as well because there's not a ton of colors in this. Just a thought. It could look interesting. Hey, she's smelling the flowers. The focus is not on her face or on her eyes. This one missed at F10, 1 250th of a second at 40. Why are we at F10 is the question. There's no reason to be at F10 on this. They may be shooting this in auto. Let me see, is there any more information I could get out of this? Uh, show EXIF data. Do, do, do. Well, their name is in there, that's cool. Exposure, max metering, metering mode, multi-segment. I'm looking for exposure mode auto. I was right, I was right. They are shooting on auto, which there's nothing wrong with shooting on auto because it's a teaching tool. Because we can use this shot that's done in auto to teach how to get out of auto to get this shot even better. At F10, this is a complete failure of a shot. It doesn't need to be at F10. You're at 40 millimeters with an 18 to 105. You could probably be around three, five, uh, well actually it's at eight, it's probably about at F5. I don't care about the ISO being a little higher and I don't care about the shutter speed on this, but you could have been at F5 getting into manual, but the focus needs to go here on her face. It looks like we missed and it's up here on the, I don't know where it is, somewhere on the butterfly. It's just not, it's not that great of a shot. Uh, even with her sniffing the flower, and if it was in focus, still not that great of a shot. What could make it better is if her eyes were up looking out, or if then she was sniffing with her head turned while looking at you. It's okay to direct your subjects. It's all right to get this shot first, and then if you have time and the ability to say, hey, girly girl, look over this way. Give me those eyes, you know? You, you can do that stuff. Oh, this is nice. I do have some compositional thoughts about it. Again, F14 shooting auto most likely because that's the only way you can get to really F14 with that. Um, composition wise, we don't need this down here. The focus is gonna be right up here. So this could be, a, oh, look how dirty the sensor is. You can see how dirty the sensor is. Anyway, if I was to do the composition, you could do a creative crop like this. That would be interesting. I just don't think you need the waves down here because they're exactly in the center. This is something where I would push up. I'm trying to show you <laughs> where I would push up and be more along the lines of this. And whether they're right in the middle or they're thrown off to more of the side, I think the horizon line below the middle of the frame would add to the image. Um, in terms of your color, pro it's fine. Processing's fine. Don't mind what's going on in this. Um, but I would just work on the composition. This is a cave shot. I, I mean, it's okay. Let's see. Zoom, 18 minutes, no exif day. Why isn't it not showing it to me this time? I don't know. But I like the reflection in the water. The color I do like because you're in a, a, an old cave. Uh, I don't know if this is a Linode or Linot. What did they used to call these things? I don't know what they call it. A, ceno, a cenote? A cenota? A, a cenote? Whatever. Something when I was in Mexico. It was something with water in it. Under, underground. Um, I like the colors, I like the tones, I don't mind the color in this at all. It's an okay shot, not the greatest in the world, it's okay. This throws me off being at F11, but this one you nailed the focus. This needs more contrast. I po Oh, look how that's a, that's a piece of dirt on the sensor. This one I probably would run through some Faded Glory, Wonder Years, possibly Universal Soldier, which is a good one for a universal starting point. This is just a little flat for my liking. It looks like it's straight out of the camera without any touching up being done. Um, so this just needs some touching up, some booming a little bit in my opinion. Some contrast would bring out this gecko, geico, uh, plus it's not really fully in focus, but anyway, just a little contrast would make it look better. And then this is the last shot that I sit there and I go, what? 
yes, it's a naked girl, woman, person, human with a hat. Um, it's not a gamp hat, it's, a, it's actually just a hat. Uh, I don't like the tones. I don't like the fact that they pulled down on the clarity so much to make this have that glowy McGlowerson, uh, just soft look. It doesn't work for me. And I'm not saying that a super contrasty shot would have worked for me. I like that you're trying something with the lighting. I just don't think it's executed very well with the processing. I can't see the person, it's, which is fine. And they're blocking all the good stuff. That's okay also. It's just a very flat, blah image. I think the processing is really not good. Uh, this, pump up that contrast, get rid of that glowing McGlowerson thing. You don't need to make the skin look super duper soft like it's doing. And also compositional, not compositionally, but uh, image wise, it's just, there's really nothing going on in the shot. Uh, so that looks to be 10 images. Let's go back to where we started. What I like is mostly the composition is going really well. And I think that they've done a nice job here with a lot of the processing, not all of it. Uh, and the one thing I'd recommend is trying to get out of auto so that you can get better, so that you can take control of your images and not be at F10 or whatever you were on this shot, F11 on this one, uh, F16 here or what, whatever. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but you can control the camera much better than the camera controlling you. Learn on auto, that's fine, and then start to progress and understand the cause and effect that if I change this, this is gonna happen. And you know what I forgot by the end of this? That this was done with a, a, a D90 because it doesn't matter, it's about capturing the moment with whatever camera that you have. If you'd like to submit your best 10 images, go to bit.ly slash fro critiques. You could submit them there. And if you wanna check out the Fro Pack 1, which are 14 custom Lightroom presets that Steven and I have created, go to fronosphoto.com slash presets. Right there, you can play with all 14 of them and see how the sliders work. See the before and afters. Waffle House is cool. Look at the tones. Sometimes there's muted tones, sometimes there's more Boomified, it all depends on the look that you're going for. One of my favorite ones here is actually Faded Glory. It's pretty subtle, but what it does is it gives you that 1950s style look that just, I don't know, it just looks really good. So as you can see, there's a lot of different presets for you to play with. Go ahead and download them. They're on sale currently for 40% off. Go to fronosphoto.com slash presets to pick them up right now. And that's where I'll leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland Fronos photo.com. See ya.